Hey everyone, welcome to another anatomy video. And today we're going to be going over all the bones found in the hand. So this should be a really simple video. Starting with the hand, we're going to go over first in the carpal region, all of the carpal bones. Now there are eight carpal bones and they're tightly packed together and they vary in size. So the way we're going to study it is we're going to study these bones by dividing them into two rows. Okay. Right here, I've divided these proximal carpal bones from this distal row of carpal bones. Starting with the lateral most on the proximal row right here, this bone is going to be called the scaphoid bone. Now there aren't any landmarks that we need to learn on these bones except for one carpal bone and I'll mention that when we get to it. So the first, on the first row, the most lateral carpal bone is the scaphoid bone. Moving medially, we have this bone. This bone is going to be called the lunate bone. Again, moving over, we have two bones kind of stacked on top of each other. The bottom one, this one right here, this bone is called the triquetral bone. Triquetral bone. Good. Now the bone that's found on top of it, this is the smallest of all the carpal bones out of the eight. This bone is called the pisiform bone or sometimes pronounced the pisiform bone. Awesome. So that those are all the bones, the carpal bones, in the proximal row. Moving on to the next row, the distal row, again starting on the lateral side right here, we have another bone, and that bone is going to be called the trapezium bone. And the way I remember this is the trapezium bone, because you have trapezium by the thumb. Trapezium by the thumb. That's just a fun little way to remember it. So we have the trapezium bone. The next bone we have is the trapezoid bone. Good. The next carpal bone is the largest of all the carpal bones, of all eight of them, and this is the seventh bone. This bone is going to be called the capitate bone. Now the name capitate should look familiar. It should remind you of caput. This bone is the largest, so it's they called it the head bone or the capitate bone. So the proper name of it is the capitate bone. Okay, not the head bone, but capitate should remind you of caput. Okay, so that's the capitate bone. And lastly, we have the hamate bone. Now the hamate bone is the only bone, carpal bone that we need to know that has a landmark. And you could see, so this is the hamate bone right here. You see it has a little projection right here. and It's like a little hook. This is going to be called the hamulus of the hamate bone. Awesome. And those are all of the carpal bones. Now, you might be thinking this is kind of complex. They're strange names and there's not really any um, good indicator to you know, know the order of all these bones. Well, there is a mnemonic that I have found to be helpful. And I'm just going to say it out right loud and it's called So Long to Pinky, Here Comes the Thumb. So I'm going to write that out too. So Long to Pinky, Here comes the thumb. Okay? Now if you have if you take the first letter of each word, that represents a carpal bone. So if you follow this trail that I'm going to draw right here, we're going to go from lateral to medial. Okay? Why do I do that? Because so long to pinky, so this is the furthest way to get to the pinky or to the area where the pinky is on the medial aspect. So, so long to pinky, which is from the scaphoid bone all the way to the pisiform bone. 
and then it says, here comes the thumb. And then you work your way back to the lateral side towards the thumb. Okay? Now, if you follow this order with the mnemonic, you'll be able to identify and name each bone. So is scaphoid. Long is lunate. Um, two is triquetral. Then pinky, which is pisiform bone. Then here is hamate. Comes is capitate. The is um, trapezoid. And then trapezium is thumb. Okay, so so long to pinky, here comes the thumb. So long to pinky, here comes the thumb. And if you use this mnemonic, it should help you remember the order and the names of all the carpal bones. Good. Now we can move on to the next stage. Now the next stage is the metacarpal bones. Now we know what the metacarpus is, which is this region right here. All these bones within these brackets are metacarpal bones. And they're numbered. We have, and these are the names of them as well. This is the first metacarpal bone, the second metacarpal bone, the third metacarpal bone, the fourth metacarpal bone, and the fifth metacarpal bone. So the first metacarpal bone is found um, just underneath the first digit, which is the thumb. So this is the first metacarpal bone. And then all the way to the fifth metacarpal bone. So those are the official names of them. Okay, there's no other unique names. There's first, second, third, fourth, and fifth metacarpal bones. However, they do have landmarks on them. So right here we have the base of the metacarpal bones. These are the bases of the metacarpal bones. Now remember, you have to parent them. So you have to parent it to the metacarpal bone that you chose. So if I indicated this base, this is the base of the first metacarpal bone. This is the base of the second metacarpal bone, so on and so forth. After the base, you have this region right here. This is the body of the metacarpal bones. And again, you have to parent it to the bone you're referring to. So if we start on the other side, this is the body of the fifth metacarpal bone. Right here, we have the body of the third metacarpal bone, so on and so forth. Last landmark on the metacarpal bones is the head. Right here is the head of the metacarpal bones. Okay, so again, head of the fifth, head of the fourth, head of the third, head of the second, and head of the first on the metacarpal bones. And those are all the landmarks that you need to know on the metacarpal bones. Quite easy. Base, body, head of the, and then you say the metacarpal bone that you're referring to. Now, you may be wondering, what are these two bumps right here? Now, if you remember when I was talking about the total number of bones in the body, I, was, I mentioned that they're sesamoid bones. These two bones right here are sesamoid bones at the base of the thumb that I mentioned. Now, for whatever reason, I still don't know why, most um, anatomy books in articles and whatever else, they teach us that there are only 206 bones in the body when really there's 214. And this image clearly demonstrates that there are two sesamoid bones at the base of the thumb. And these bones, they don't have any special name. They're just called sesamoid bones. And if you want to be more specific, you can say the sesamoid bones at the base of the thumb. And that's all you need to know. Now we can go ahead and move on to the phalanges. So these right here... And all these, these are the phalanges. Let me go ahead and clear up the other marks, all the notes I have already written. That's better. So the phalanges actually follow a similar process as the metacarpal bones do. Right here, let's start with the, the, the fifth digit, the bones of the fifth digit. We have three sets of bones right here, stacked on top of one another. This bone right here is called the proximal phalanx of the fifth digit. So let's break that down. This bone right here is proximal compared to these other two. So this bone is the proximal phalanx of the fifth digit. Phalanx is singular for phalanges. If you're talking about phalanges as a group, you can say phalanges. But if you're only talking about one specific bone like we are here, it's called a phalanx. So this is the proximal phalanx of the fifth digit. Let's practice with the next one. 
this bone right here is the middle phalanx of the fifth digit. And the last one is the distal phalanx of the fifth digit. Now this pattern continues with all of them. So we can go right here. This bone is the middle phalanx of the third digit. This bone right here is the proximal phalanx of the second digit. This bone right here is the, pro is the distal phalanx of the first digit. The first digit's tricky because it doesn't have a middle phalanx. So it only has a distal and proximal phalanx. Okay, there's no middle, so you don't say there's a middle. Okay, but the rest of them do. I hope this makes sense. So again, we have proximal phalanx, middle phalanx, and distal phalanx. And then you parent it back to the digit that it's coming from. Good. Now, let me go ahead and clear these notes again. Like the metacarpal bones, the phalanges also have landmarks. And they actually all have similar names as well. So let's start with the fifth digit again, the phalanges of the fifth digit. On the proximal phalanx, so we're talking about this bone right here, of the fifth digit, it has a base. So this would be the base of the proximal phalanx of the fifth digit. Does that make sense? We go from the smallest um, term to the largest organ. So we're talking about the base, so this is the smallest part right here, and we're pairing it back to the bone, which is the proximal phalanx, and then we pair it to the digit itself, which is the fifth digit. Okay, let's get some more practice. So right here, this is going to be the body. So we can scratch out base and we can put in body. This is the body of the proximal phalanx of the fifth digit. And then we have the head and it follows the same pattern. And it applies to all the other phalanges. So for example, this right here, this box. This box is identifying the body of the proximal phalanx of which digit? The second digit. Second digit. The same rule applies to the middle phalanges. We have a base, a body, and a head. Base, body, and a head. Base, body, and a head. And same with the last one. Now the distal phalanges are different. They also have a base, so I'm going to go ahead and label this. They have a base, they have a body, but they don't have a head. The head, or what would be the head, is actually called a tuberosity. So, let's practice on, this, on the distal phalanx of the second digit. Right here, we have the base of the distal phalanx of the second digit. Right here, we have the tuberosity of the distal phalanx of the second digit. And that applies to all distal phalanges. Perfect. Now a lot of students really trip up on this and it, and it takes practice because it is a mouthful. But just remember, the metacarpal bones, the proximal phalanges, and the middle phalanges all have a base, body, head. The proximal, the proximal middle, and distal phalanges are always parented back to the digit that they came from. But the metacarpal bones are not. They are not part of the digits. 
They may look like it in skeletal form, but in reality, when you look down in your hand, this right here is just your palm. These are the digits. So we do not parent the metacarpal bones back to the digit, only the phalanges. And another thing to remember, that the distal phalanges, they don't have heads, they have tuberosities. So for example, once again, on this one right here, we have tuberosity of distal phalanx, the distal phalanx of third digit. There's one more thing we need to cover. Back to the carpal bones. Let me go ahead and clear these notes one last time. When talking about the carpal bones down here, so we know the names of them and we know the one landmark, which is the hamulus of the hamate bone. The carpal bones, when they're together, they kind of form a groove right here. It's almost like a cup. It's concaved right here. This is going to be called the carpal groove. Now the anterior surface of all these carpal bones, they make that groove. So this right here is called the carpal groove. And it's much easier to see, not on an image, but on a model or a real life uh, bone specimen. And that is it. Those are all of the bones and landmarks found in the hand.